Yeah, dear, uh, dear colleagues, dear chairs, thank you very much for the opportunity uh, to give uh, my opinion on the choice of surgical type in perihilar cholangiocarcinoma tumors and difficult intraoperative um, decisions. These are my disclosures. So there's still an ongoing debate uh, about the Hila on block procedure, and we had something like a little fight with the Japanese group of Professor Nagino last, uh, or the, the year before last year. Um, very interesting, and uh, we, we all know that like the results in the eastern uh, part of the world, uh, especially in Asia, they usually a little bit better than the western part, but we still not really know why that is. So I have an agenda here, uh, some introductory words. I can maybe skip a little bit of this because my, uh, um, uh, the speaker before made a lot of uh, this. Then I um, want to ask some questions, uh, how to proceed with positive lymph nodes. Um, should we go for left or right-sided hepatectomy if we have the, the choice? Um, what about selective or standard portal vein resection? Uh, what about intraoperative positive bile duct uh, resection margins if they are proximal and if they are distal? And uh, how can we um, or can we identify preoperative known influencing factors of 90 day mortality and of overall survival? So for the introduction, I make this real quick because we have already heard it. Uh, one very interesting thing uh, might be that um, in the intrahepatic uh, um, angiocarcinoma, we already have some mutations that are targetable. But for the uh, extrahepatic um, cholangiocarcinoma, we have some mutations, but up to now they are not targetable. So uh, surgery uh, uh, remains um, the thing to do. So these are very complex oncological diseases, the clad skin tumors. Um, we need a multidisciplinary expertise. We need excellent teamwork between HPB surgery and anesthesiology. We need our interventional radiologists. We need gastroenterology and endoscopy. We need oncology and pathology. And we all come together once a week in the multidisciplinary tumor board and make individualized decisions for our patients. So, um, what about systemic therapy? I make this real quick. Um, there is up to now no established neoadjuvant chemotherapy. In adjuvant, we would go for capacitabine analogous to the Bill Cup trial. Uh, there are some recruiting studies concerning uh, adjuvant therapy. Um, but uh, overall, if you look at the results of the oncologic therapy, um, systemic therapy is not really a good option. You have like median overall survivals of about one year if you treat the patients. So some anatomical specifics of perihilar cholangiocarcinoma. Uh, what you have to keep in mind is very important that the right bile duct usually is very short, only like one centimeter, until the bifurcation for the anteromedial and posterolateral um, sectors. And on the left side, usually the bile duct is much longer. Uh, another important thing, if you look at these two uh, planes in the, uh, in the hilum, you can see that the right hepatic artery usually is very close to the bile duct and to the bile duct bifurcation, and the left hepatic artery usually um, uh, goes away a little bit earlier. So um, in most cases, we have an arterial infiltration or arterial attachment to the tumor. So um, this leads to the concept of hyla on block surgery. It was um, uh, first described by my uh, boss, Professor Newhouse, uh, in the 90s. And uh, this is the principle of the um, hyla on block surgery. Here you see a schematic um, uh, picture, and here you see the intraoperative picture. And you can see that the left uh, artery is going earlier than the right artery. And this area where the tumor is, is absolutely no touched if you perform the hyla on block um, and the idea of it was that you can get much better R0 resections if you go for the extended right hyla on block resections. So uh, if you don't do hyla on block, uh, or why uh, did he develop the concept of hyla on block? Um, it is seen here. If you do bile duct resection alone, you have a very low R0 uh, resection rate, but you also have very low mortality. But the overall survival in three and five years is uh, not really sufficient. It's more comparable to the uh, systemic therapy. If you do liver resection with bile duct resection, this gets a little bit better. Um, but still, uh, you don't reach the, um, the overall survival that you can reach with the hyla on block surgery, as you can see in the uh, bottom of this table. 
So this is from the original publications from uh, my former boss, from Professor Newhouse, and I want to point uh, to one thing what is very important. If you talk about clad skin tumors, all these publications, they had like excluded perioperative mortality. So perioperative mortality in clad skin surgery is very high, and you always have to consider this when you talk to your patients and talk about what you plan for them. So what about positive lymph nodes? Um, this is from the uh, cholangiocarcinoma correlation group, 22 centers, uh, about 500 patients, median follow-up of 10 years. Of course, if there's lymph node uh, positivity, the overall survival is significantly less. Uh, these are our own results, uh, about 230 patients, and uh, on the left graph you can see um, if you have uh, no lymph node positivity, the R resection is very important because with R0 resections you can um, uh, get a much better overall survival than with R1 resections. But in the moment when you have positive lymph nodes, um, the R resection is not so important anymore. There's no benefit from an R0 resection if the lymph nodes are positive. So what did we do? Right or left hepatectomy if we have the chance to, to, to have a choice? So again, from the perihila uh, cholangiocarcinoma correlation group, this time much more patients, 1,700 patients, and also our center results. Um, what were uh, um, factors for 90-day mortality? right side hepatectomy was an independent risk factor for mortality perioperatively. And uh, our own um, uh, results you can see here, um, uh, the same like right hepatectomy. You see this, uh, this uh, um, deep step in the, uh, in the Kaplan-Meier curve. Um, and even if you, but if you, uh, even if you exclude um, the 90-day the mortality and you do a propensity score matching between right hepatectomy and left hepatectomy, the left-sided resections uh, are significantly better in short and long-term survival. So we, uh, in our center, tried it to define something like a textbook outcome after major hepatectomy for the clad skin tumors, and uh, the definition was no 90-day mortality, no uh, high morbidity, no readmission, not an extended length of stay, and we could reach this in about 24% per uh, of the patients, and the influencing factors for uh, no textbook outcome, again, were uh, right-sided resections. So should we go for selective or standard portal vein resections, like in the hyalur on block? So um, this is an, an article we published together with uh, the Van Gullick group in Amsterdam in HPB in 2021. So usually uh, Van Gullick and his group, they prefer the uh, 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 selective portal vein resection, and we prefer the standard portal vein resection. So um, this, these were like 250 uh, patients, and we had a propensity score matching, so only 45 versus 45 patients remained. And um, the main results were that the standard portal vein resection um, did not show an increased morbidity or 90-day mortality. The length of stay was a little bit longer in our department. Um, in selective portal vein resection, there was were le less lymph nodes acquired. Um, but the overall survival was not really significantly different between uh, the both centers. What about intraoperative positive bioduct resection margins? Because I, I was asked to, to talk about difficult intraoperative uh, um, uh, situations. So what can we do then? I found two papers on this, and uh, one is from the Nagino group from Nagaya, Nagoya University, 74 patients where they had uh, intraoperative um, positive distal bile duct uh, uh, margins. And um, they uh, did uh, additional resections in, in some patients, they, uh, and um, for additional resections, they either did intrahepatic, uh, intrapancreatic bile duct resections, or they, they extended the operation to a very big operation with pancreatic or duodenectomy. And concerning the results, it seems that um, uh, the additional resection significantly improved the survival uh, for the secondary R0 resections, but if you have a very close look at the, at the figures, you think that the bile duct resection, in, intrapancreatic bile duct resection R1 versus the intrahepatic bile duct resection R0 has not a really good effect. Yeah? And um, there was no real good positive effect um, for additional resections if there were lymph nodes positive. So I would more think this is kind of a tumor biology effect. 
So their conclusion was that additional resection for frozen section positive um, uh, resection margins in distal um, frequently would yield R0 resections and the patients would have a better chance of long-term survival, but um, I would kind of a little bit doubt this. So uh, concerning the proximal positive resection margin, I found another paper from the Tokyo University, 190 patients. This is published this year in Annals of Surgical Oncology in February. And um, like they, were, they, they had like um, uh, 70 patients with initially a positive margin and um, they did no re-resection in 50 patients and in 20 patients they did a re-resection but they could only achieve in about 50% of the re-resected patients a secondary R0 resection. So concerning their results, you see the patients that are initially R0 in the proximal bile duct, um, they do much, much better than the patients with uh, initially R1 resection. And uh, uh, very interesting, I found, concerning the reconstruct survival and concerning the overall survival, um, the finally uh, R0 resections and the secondary R, uh, R, uh, R1 resections, they stay the same. So there is not real benefit of an additional resection in the proximal part. Uh, what was the driver? So there were some clinical pathological factors associated with initial R1 resection and um, this was of course uh, again lymph, lymphonodal positivity. So this is a, a good hint that uh, this is all more or less kind of tumor biology or the time when you do the diagnosis, whether it's already very extended disease. So their conclusion was um, an interoperative frozen section positive proximal hepatic duct margin dictates poor long-term outcomes for patients with resectable clad skin tumors and additional resection has only a minimal impact on survival even if the negative margin is achieved. Are there any preoperative known influencing factors for risk esti estimation? And my, uh, the, uh, the speaker before me also showed you an app that you can use for risk estimation. So this is again um, um, uh, from the uh, peri uh, from the perihilar colangio carcinoma co correlation group with uh, 25 centers, 1,700 patients. So uh, here are the factors that um, affecting 90-day mortality, and it is age. It is of course the performance status from the anesthesiologist grading. Preoperative cholangitis is very, very uh, dangerous for 90-day uh, for mortality. And of course, the big tumors and the right-sided hepatectomy, again, are um, um, uh, factors that uh, acquire the 90-day mortality. What about the overall survival? Um, uh, this is the BMI and the Joan Day's presentation of the patient. And again, of course, um, the performance status of the patient measured by the ASA grade. And the bismuth type 4, they don't do good in overall survival. Hepatic artery involvement always is uh, not a good sign. The tumor diameter and again right-sided hepatectomy also has an influence of overall survival as I have shown in some studies before. So from, from this um, a big amount of patients, um, the authors of this uh, paper, they uh, kind of made a decision, favorable risk profiles, intermediate risk profiles, and unfavorable risk profiles, if you compare the predicted 90-day mortality and the predicted overall survival. And I think the patients that we would need such a calculator are more like in the yellow group, because in the, in the, in the red group, everybody would say, okay, this is not a good indication to do the operation. And in the green group, there's also no question. So I use this uh, uh, for you to give just some um, examples. So on the left side, you would have like a 60-year-old uh, patient with a low BMI yeah, and uh, no drone dyes, no cholangitis, uh, bismuth 1 to 3, diameter of the tumor uh, 3 centimeters and right hepatectomy, yes. So the calculator gives you out 90-day mortality of 10% and overall survival 5 years 40%. So this patient, of course, operation. But to be honest, the most patients that come to my outpatient clinic, they are not like 60 years and BMI 25. So they are more like 80 years, a little obesity, they have jaundice, they had cholangitis, they have maybe a bismuth 4 uh, tumor, and uh, if you would use the calculator, you would have like here a 90-day mortality of 50%. So this is a little bit too much. Okay, to summarize this. I think the therapy of perihelar colangio carcinoma is very complex and multidisciplinary approach is needed. 
The perioperative morbidity and mortalities are high. Patients with positive lymph nodes need adjuvant therapy as soon as possible, and this might lead to the uh, conclusion that we may do a less radical procedure if this is possible. So maybe a minimal invasive lymphadenectomy before the planning of the final strategy would be a way that we could do in the future. Re-resection for intraoperative positive proximal bile duct margins does not seem to have a positive effect on the long-term survival, and re-resections for the distal positive margins might be indicated, but in very, very highly selected cases. So we need an individualized risk estimation, individualized procedures, and corresponding patient counseling and operation planning. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you very much for this excellent lecture. Uh, Soru, who will face our... So, hepatectomilerin daha iyi programda sahip olduğunu söyledi. I need the translator. Oh, okay. Bir iki saniye bekleyelim Feza abi. En pratik bu şey olur. Bir de yan taraftan ses geliyor arkadaşlar. Onu bir uyarırsanız iyi olur. Gala gecesi başladı galiba yani. Evet, evet. Sol hepatektomilerin daha iyi programda sahip olduğunu söylediniz. Okay, I, I start with the first question. I start with this question and then another one. Yeah, um, this is a very good question. Of course, we asked us uh, this to ourselves and uh, uh, usually the, die, uh, the patient dies from um, postoperative hepatic failure. So um, we think um, main, the main important point is that you have enough liver left. And if you do a left-sided trisectronectomy and you have um, segment six and seven, so usually the patient has no problem from liver function because six and seven is so big. If you go for a right-sided trisectomy and you have two and three left, usually you're on the edge, and if the patient has a cholangitis afterwards or any other complication, it's very, very difficult to survive for him. And second one. <laughs> uh, what do you think about the central resection? Uh, I mean that um, if a patient has an intact uh, portal vein, left and right, and the intact uh, uh, hepatic artery, uh, would, you, would you prefer to do a central resection or maybe you can say that uh, the right posterior section is enough for us and the standard <coughs> left hepatectomy? Uh, which, which, uh, uh, I, I understand. Which is your uh, uh, choice? Yes, thank you very much for this question. Um, so the central resections um, are very rarely indicated because uh, I, I think we we very rarely see patients where this is possible. Yeah, as I as I have shown from the uh, anatomic specifics, like um, the right hepatic artery very often is involved, and also the um, um, the portal vein bifurcation. But of course, um, you can make individualized um, procedures, and if you have a patient that. Um, qualifies for for central resection, you might do it, yeah? But I, I actually, I, I've never done one of those. Başka bir sorumuz var mı? Buyurun, kısa olarak Thank you, sir. Dr. Matez from uh, Surgical Oncology, Can we say Cancer Biraz Center, daha Ankara uh, City Hospital. I just want to ask you, uh, what's, I know it's uh, the topic about uh, uh, the difficulty of uh, surgery, 
But my question is, it's a little bit um, about what is the definition now of uh, lymph node dissection and uh, pericholangiocarcinoma, perihilar. Because there's a lot of debates about where we should go for lymph node. There's some saying about uh, lymph node, six, uh, about station 16. And it's, uh, it's your way to do sampling or, or, or wh wh where we stand now from the lymph node dissection. Thank you. Um. Yeah, as, um, also excellent question. So usually um, uh, we in my center, we only perform the uh, lymph node dissection in the hepatoduodenal ligament and following the hepatic artery until the ciliar trunk. If you have lymph nodes, positive lymph nodes um, between the cava and the aorta, usually this is a M1 stadium, so uh, you, we, we wouldn't get this through our multidisciplinary tumor board. The oncologist would say systemic disease, no resection. So then we would go for um, try some kind of neoadjuvant therapy, and if the patient after three months is stable, we would say, okay, now we can try to perform the operation. And, and at least six lymph nodes for staging reasons have to be taken. Thank you very much, Vincent. For